Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Uh, we are into the final week of the college football regular season. It's week 14 already. Got some action here. Two games on Tuesday night. Let's do it. Welcome to The Swuss. The Swuss. Swuss. Hey, get the Swiss. First up, we got Toledo on the road at Akron. Uh, zips are catching. It looks like it's mostly eight now. Pretty much eight across the board. Total sitting at 48 and a half or 49, depending on your sports book. Let's get into this matchup. We'll start with the Toledo offense. This is an offense that wants to throw the ball. They're 42nd in pass frequency. They want the ball in the hands of their quarterback, Tucker Gleason. On the season, they've been pretty good. They're 60th in yards per pass attempt, 52nd in success rate per rush. Yes, they don't give Gleason much run support, though. 117th in yards per carry, 125th in success rate per rush. They don't have much of a rushing presence, but they can throw it. I'd put them a notch below Miami of Ohio with Gabbert, a notch below Bowling Green uh, and Connor Basilak. But they're probably the next best passing attack in the MAC after those two teams. And this should be a favorable matchup for them. This Akron defense has not done a great job against the pass on the season. 120th in yards per pass attempt, 126th in success rate per, uh, per dropback. So this is looking like a pretty good matchup for Tucker Gleason and the Toledo offense. The problem with this Toledo offense, it's been the same thing all year. Can they keep Tucker Gleason safe in the pocket or not? As you can see right here, Tucker Gleason has been pressured on 37.1% of his dropbacks this year. He's the 29th most pressured quarterback in all of college football. So again, that's been the story of Toledo. Can they keep this kid protected or not? Because you can see from this graphic here, when he does have a clean pocket, he can do some damage. A plus QB rating when given a clean pocket. It's when you put pressure on him, that's when he starts running into some problems. Good news for Toledo, Akron does not have much of a pass rush at all. 125th in pressure rate, 77th in sack rate actually isn't bad. Um, just 117th in PFF pass rush grade. So it should be a favorable matchup for Toledo in that respect. Tucker Gleason should have clean pockets to throw from in this game. Now, I do want to give the Akron defense some credit. They've actually looked all right in their last two home games. 31 points allowed per game, but... 42.9% success rate, 5.68 yards per play. I mean, that's not absolutely terrible for Akron. Their numbers against the run look great. 148 and a half rushing yards allowed per game, 33.3% success rate per rush. This is actually a decent Mac run defense here at Akron. The problem with that is, as we said before, Toledo's an offense that wants to throw the ball. And you could see Akron's numbers against the pass in those same two home games we were just giving them credit for, 51.5% success rate per dropback. So, Although Akron's defense isn't that bad, they're, they're stronger against the run than they are the pass, and that's not where you want to be when you're playing this Toledo team. Some more bad news for the Akron defense here. They run a lot of zone coverage, 24th in zone coverage frequency in the FBS. The reason that's bad news is Toledo's got great looking numbers against zone. Tucker Gleason's been very good throwing the ball against zone coverage this year. So starting to think this might be a really nice looking matchup for Toledo and for Tucker Gleason. They should be able to throw the ball, but obviously this is a late November game in Akron. So we definitely have to check the weather and even more good news for Toledo. It's going to be cold, 28 degrees, but late November in Akron, that's not that bad. Under 10 mile an hour winds, no rain. So it's actually some favorable weather for Toledo as well. All in all, I think it's a good matchup. I think Tucker Gleason's going to be able to throw the ball in this game. I think Toledo's offense should be able to put up points. Now, when we flip it over to the other side of the ball, obviously Toledo has the huge edge here defensively. The Akron offense hasn't been that great. Although they have had a few good games recently, Ben Finley is capable of throwing the ball. I mean, this isn't a complete garbage offense here in Akron, maybe early in the season when they were playing some really tough competition. Last handful of games, we've seen Akron put some points on the board. This offense isn't incapable um, this is a pass first offense their 15th in pass frequency the problem for akron is this toledo defense has not really struggled against the pass i mean these are their two games against mac passing attacks so these are their two games in conference play against teams that throw the ball um and they really didn't have many problems 6.3 yards per pass attempt allowed 44 percent success rate per drop back actually isn't great bowling green's much better than akron and honestly eastern michigan's passing attack with cole snyder is better than akron as well so this is a pretty good pass defense i mean yes if you rewind back earlier in the season you can find toledo struggling a little bit with the pass here and there they struggle against mississippi state that's an sec program they also struggle a little bit against western kentucky that's a very good passing attack neither are comparable to akron toledo should have a 
huge edge in the defensive front. I mean, 31st in sack rate, 60th in pressure rate. Akron's offensive line has had its problems this year. 108th in pressure rate allowed, 82nd in sack rate. So Toledo should have no problems generating pressure on Ben Finley in this game. Now, like I said before, this Akron offense hasn't been completely terrible. So I don't want to just dismiss the Akron offense. I mean, if you look at their last five games, they are averaging 26.6 points per game, over 6.1 yards per play. Look at the passing numbers in those same last five games, over 280 passing yards per game. Like I said, this isn't a completely garbage offense. They can move the ball. Here is why I can't put my faith in the Akron offense in this game. If you take a closer look at their game logs, they've done all their damage against really bad defenses. They went off against Colgate, an FCS program. They went off in the Western Michigan game. That offense, that defense is terrible. They went off against Eastern Michigan a bit. Buffalo. These are bad defenses. Kent State last week, they put up 38 points. So they've done all of their offensive damage against really bad defenses. They've played five games this year against defenses ranked in the top 75 in the country. Toledo's 47, by the way. So Toledo would definitely fit that description. In those games, the offense didn't do much. Just 14 points per game, 4.1 yards per play. Passing numbers, this is a pass first offense. Not good here. 175 yards per game, 4.76 yards per attempt. Success rate per drop back under 27%. So although I don't think this Akron offense is completely terrible, this Toledo defense is pretty damn good and they shouldn't have problems. Seven and a half on the road is tough, but weather should be okay. Tucker Gleason should have no problems throwing the ball. I know a lot of people are probably looking at that Eastern Michigan game for Toledo. They went on the road to Eastern Michigan, only won by a point. The game came down to the wire. But here's the thing. Eastern Michigan, although they're not a great team, they actually do have a pass rush, which as we talked about before, that's how you beat Toledo. You put pressure on Tucker Gleason. Eastern, Mich Eastern Michigan actually does have a pass rush. Akron does not. So I expect Toledo to win, put up points and cover here. Toledo minus seven and a half. I see one open on ESPN bet. I'm going to grab it. Next game. Kent State on the road at Buffalo. I'm not spending <laughs> a ton of time on this one. Buffalo lane, 21 and a half, 22, 22 and a half. Total sitting at 48 and a half or 49. Now, the thing with this game is if you actually pull up graphics like this and look at season long numbers, it doesn't look like Buffalo is much better than Kent State. I mean, Buffalo's offense 111th and no FEI. Kent State's defense is dead last, 134th. This is the worst defense in college football. So you might be looking at a graphic like this thinking, how are you laying three touchdowns in this game? Buffalo's offense isn't even good. But here's the thing with Buffalo's offense, and you already know this if you've been following Mac football, they have caught fire the second half of the season. In their last six games, Buffalo's averaging 36 points per game over six yards per play, 43.1% success rate. agbana has been going off, connecting on some deep passes. I mean, this team can run the ball. They have an explosive passing attack. This offense out of nowhere has become probably a top five Mac offense. So we really can't sleep on this Buffalo offense. And against the Kent State defense, that's the worst in the country, not just the worst in the conference. I would take Kennesaw State's defense over Kent State. So Buffalo at home, weather's supposed to be fine. They should score on basically every single possession. Also, something that's interesting, and in the comments, someone let me know, Buffalo is five and two in conference. Miami of Ohio and Bowling Green play each other this week, so one of them is going to have two losses. If my, if Ohio, the Bobcats lose, can Buffalo still sneak in the MAC championship game? I think the answer is no, but theoretically, they can still tie for one of the top two positions in the conference. So Buffalo might have a weird outside shot of still playing in the MAC championship game. I might be wrong on that. But regardless, Buffalo at home against this Kent State defense should score on basically every single possession. So I'm not going to spend any more time talking about this. It'll be Buffalo minus the points, Buffalo team total over. You know what? Say Buffalo team total over or the full game over, 48 and a half, because Kent State has actually shown us they're capable of scoring points a little bit. So either over or Buffalo team total over here. Probably not going to bet this one. We'll talk about it on the live show, which is at 4 p.m. Eastern time, by the way. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. Yeah, let's have ourselves a good one. This weekend is crazy. The best weekend all year. The best football weekend of the year starts in a couple days. Please remember to bet responsibly. Hit me up in the Discord if you need me.